Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm your host and today I want to talk to you about IVF and particularly about lowering my toxin level. So I have been doing a bit of a story for a while now over in my free pelvic floor health Facebook group, but I thought I would do a little recap for the podcast to let you lot, you lot know what it is that I'm doing, um, my, a bit of my story about IVF and why I am, yeah, why I'm doing what I'm doing. <clears throat> the idea of telling this story, and this is what I mentioned at the start in my group, is that I know purely from sitting in the waiting room at the IVF clinic that I'm not alone. I'm not the only person going through this. And if my story can help somebody, even if it's just one person, then it's worth sharing. So without further ado, let's get going. I, um, to give you a little bit of a backstory, me my husband and I have been trying to get pregnant since August 2017. That is when I came off the pill. Um, for context, it is now September 2020, so it has been just over three years. We, I also have endometriosis, which is why I was on the pill in the first place. So I um, came off the pill and we were trying, as you do, we tried for about a year and um, because I was getting up close to my 35th birthday and I thought that is quote unquote geriatric pregnancy time and they say one year rather than two. So I went to the doctors after a year and they referred me on to fertility associates and we went to them and we um, did the whole checkups and blood tests and um, hysterosalpingogram, there was a dye test to check my tubes, check whether they were blocked and they were fine. Then I went on Clomid and had a few scans and we tried one round of that, that didn't work. And then at the same time, we learned that we qualified for IVF due to the fact that I have widespread endometriosis. When I had surgery for endometriosis back in 2003, four, 2004, and they discovered it was on my ovaries, it was on my bowel, it was on my bladder. So it was extensive, which classes as a grade four. And that put me over the line to get IVF. So, we did our climate and that was, that didn't work. And then it was about nine months out from our wedding. We got married February this year. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> and I didn't want, I thought knowing my luck, that will be the time I get pregnant when I'm distracted and I'm planning a wedding. And I didn't want to have to worry about dresses and taking in or letting out or buying a dress that I didn't want to wear or even getting a bit too close to giving birth or having anything go wrong. I didn't want that extra stress. So we just cold trying and we left it. So we waited a year just after our wedding in February, we got the letter in March saying, right, it's IVF time. Ta-da! Yay! And we got our, um, this is probably turning more into my IVF story. I might have to continue this for a second episode. But um, yeah, so we got the letter 
and we found well I we I phoned up and they told me to let them know when I get my period in I can't remember which month it was and probably April and then we would go from there it would be yep yeah, okay the ball is still rolling then of course from the news and everyone I'm sure knows we have a global pandemic so we hit level four lockdown in New Zealand and everything if it wasn't already going everything got cold we were locked inside so no IVF for us we waited for four weeks six weeks whatever it was until we came out of lockdown and I phoned them again to say right okay what's happening we're in level two now help help what's happening and we had so I was told we booked a appointment we went in I got told when I had my period in June they would then give me pills about the middle of my cycle this is a huge recap I'll um, post individual the individual um, videos that I did as I was recapping and going through all this I'll post them on YouTube I think so you can kind of see bit by bit it might make more sense um, yeah so about the middle of my cycle my cycles average it was about 34 days it's now 30 days on average it um, so the pills that they gave me are called Proganova and what that is is that um, prevents any follicles from growing after I've ovulated so apparently after you ovulate the body the ovaries start preparing and getting ready for um, well it starts growing the new follicles and the follicle is what contains a mature egg the follicle isn't the egg the follicle can be about 10 no, no nearly two centimeters of fully grown follicle can be and that is what can, contains fluid and contains the egg so what they wanted to do is prevent any from growing earlier and that meant that when it came to injection time and stimulation time it meant that everyone was on a level playing field so there weren't any ones that were growing quicker than the others because if there were ones that were already growing the ovaries might go no I've already done my job look look there's that one there so I think I think that was it so I started that until I got my period in July which was just before my birthday and we had people around and so I got my period I phoned them up we went we picked up our injections for me for this round I was given 300 milligrams of gonal F which turns out is the maximum you can have and I found out when I went for my debrief that it was because I have low AMH which I thought last when I had my original blood test that it was kind of normal but no no it turns out it's low so I was given the full dose of gonal F and what that does is stimulate the follicle production they um, I was also given an antibiotic along with Nick which made me terribly ill which just so happened to be at our leaving party slash birthday party because we're moving house we don't do things by halves here and then what so yeah then I had that and then you go in every so many days every two to three days and they do a vaginal ultrasound where they insert a probe into my vagina and they wave it around and poke it around and move it around and see what my ovaries look like they tracked so many on either side it didn't seem like a lot so they also gave me something else to boost it can't remember the name i think it begins with a p if i remember i'll pop it in the comments 
I've got it in the video, so I'll find it. Um, I was also starting Orgalutran. So Orgalutran is, I think it's the one that prevents me from ovulating because they want the follicles to grow quite large and they want to be able to retrieve them themselves. Pregnal, I think it was Pregnal, the, the other injection to help boost. So the Gonal F wasn't a bad injection. It was a really, really fine needle. For those of you who are listening who are worried about injections, I watched my um, education video and cried when I watched them because I was terrified of the injections. The Gonal F isn't bad. And honestly, I think I prefer to do it myself because it's quite thin and doing it yourself, you don't really feel it. If somebody else is doing it, they might pull, they might scratch you like I was scratched on the way out. And yeah, it's just a little bit iffy. The Orgalutran, on the other hand, I highly recommend somebody else doing it because that needle is blunt as it's like being injected with a stick. It's not, don't know who invented these needles, but no. Nick had to, basically the first time he pushed and it went like that and it didn't go in, it didn't go in and then it went, oh, and then it was in. The second time he did it, he went for a bit more speed and went, and it went in. I couldn't have done that myself. And it does sting. That one does sting. So if you've got any numbing agent, then great. I found rubbing a, um, like a cold piece of metal, not ice because you don't want it being slippery, but I have those little metal ice blocks and I rubbed that over wrapped in a tissue, rubbed that on me to numb the area and then I just kind of rubbed, rub, 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 rub to help it disappear because it's a bit of a burny feeling. So that was those. So I did that. I went for all my checkups. I went for um, my egg collection and I managed to collect five and I am um, yeah, apparently there were five, so what they've told me at the debrief, there were five full follicles, fully grown follicles, and the other ones that they saw just weren't there, so they managed to get five eggs out of the follicles, which was good. And when you go for your egg collection, what they say is you'll pop your undies in a pocket in the gown that you have, and they will put them on along with a pad. Now, I don't really like using single use things, so I didn't want to use a pad. So I took a fabric pad and it was a normal fabric pad. It wasn't an extra long one and blood went everywhere. It went up the back, up the front. So I don't recommend that. What I'm trying next time is, spoiler alert, it didn't work this time. So, um, what I'm, gonna, what I'm doing next time is I purchased the Modi Body underwear, which feel a bit weird. I tried them on when, I, when they arrived the other day. They feel a bit weird. They feel like you're wearing a pad, but they were comfy enough. And so I'm going to put those in my pocket, put them on, and then I don't have to worry. And if the blood goes up and down and everywhere, I've got the heavier one. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. So, yes, where was I? So I've done that. Then I had, so from then, I think, I had to start doing um, progesterone pessaries. Yes, it was from then. It was three times a day. Yes, I remember her coming in and telling me, and I was all like, what, what? I didn't feel a thing, by the way. Um, yeah, pessaries, I had to insert two little marble looking things morning afternoon and evening so as soon as I got up about three o'clock in the afternoon or two o'clock in the afternoon and before I went to bed and that was fine I always wore a pad for that because you get a bit of a weird claggy discharge from the waxy coating and then I went for my oh and don't be a hero when you go for your egg collection don't be a hero. Don't think, oh, yes, I'm in the way. I've got to rush out the door. Like, sleep. If you need to sleep, just sleep. Husband's not going to care or partner's not going to care. 
you're sitting there because you're all just bleh, out of it. The nurses aren't going to care because that's what they do. And yeah, so sleep if you need to. Don't think you have to eat the toast just because they offered it to you. I, I thought, yeah, 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 no, I'll have something to eat. It'll be fine. I had about two bites and I vomited. I was so ill. And then I had a good sleep. And then they gave me some more toast later with mar no, it was no, it was crackers with marmite on. That was much better. And yeah, I had that. And I had some ginger beer when I got home and I kind of just sat on the couch feeling sorry for myself watching TV. Um, so yeah, don't be a hero for your egg collection. Just ride it, ride the wave. Um, so then transfer day. I didn't realize how I felt about transfer day because during the whole process I was quite upbeat I was quite like oh yeah this is it this is it and kind of treating it like a science experiment so like okay so this is what happens next this is what happens next and being very objective because I didn't want to get too hung up on the result because I'm a big believer in the law of attraction and things like that. And if I was so desperate that I need a baby, need a baby, need a baby, I might put the wrong thoughts out. It's a bit paranoid and a bit stupid, but yeah, that's, that was my thought. So I was trying to be positive and go, okay. And act like I'd ordered this baby. It was just being made. It was being put together in the factory. And I was kind of still in that mindset. It just, that one went to the reject bin, like the raggy dolls. If you ever met the raggy dolls, read the raggy dolls, you don't know what I'm talking about. I'll put a link to that as well. Um, yeah, but the other day when we went in for our debrief, a lady came in for her transfer and she said, hi, it's Amy for transfer. And I kind of, I watched her and she was so guarded and she looked like I even get a lump in my throat just from picturing her because there is so there is so much riding on that there is so much riding on that that it's like this is it and I went so they did my implant and my transfer on day three so they got five eggs on egg collection. The next day they phoned me up and they had fertilized three. Two of them didn't make it. Next, they um, got me in for egg collection and one didn't make it to day three. So we had a lovely little embryo, which was beautiful. It looked perfect that was being put in and there was another one here that was a bit slow, a bit lagging behind and give, being given a stern talking to and put back in its incubator. So they put that one in and they sent me on my merry way and that one was so straightforward. It was legs up in the air, chatting rubbish to the doctor who was putting the, the embryo in and having a laugh and carrying on with our day. And it was very surreal. It was like, yeah, I'm pregnant until proven otherwise. But then it was a bit scary. So we'll see. But <clears throat> the Friday, so the day five, um, they phoned up, the embryologist phoned up, and whoop, that one didn't pick up again. And that was it. So then I was feeling quite shit. I was like, oh, that's it. That, that means the one that's inside me, that's our only hope because I kind of got my wires mixed up when we were having our appointments because everything, everything is going in and your brain's like massive bees with all the thoughts of what everything is. And what I, what my understanding was, was that your cycle continues until you get a positive pregnancy until you get achieve a pregnancy with the eggs that were fertilized from that cycle. And 
I had got in my head that that was it. That means that there's no backups. If this doesn't work, we're done for. We're not going to be parents. And yeah, so I'm trying to be positive. So much is riding on it. It's like, like the world, the world was resting on my shoulders from that point. And yeah, there was nothing I could do about it. It was the first time I felt really scared since since the beginning and it was like oh shit what now what but no it was so i i acted as if i was and i was careful it was winter though so i tr i might have overheated myself with a hot water bottle but i kept it away from my tubby and i carried on doing what little work i've got and just kept on going so, yeah, and then I think, so the, imp the transfer day was a Sunday. That was it. The transfer day was a Sunday because two weeks from then was a Sunday and it was during our second lockdown. So Auckland went into a level three lockdown and... I was planning on getting a test at my local lab test on the Monday and they were going to phone me by the Sunday, by the lunchtime, by 12 o'clock and otherwise we had to drive all the way to Green Lane which was half an hour away to go for a blood test and so I was like oh can I go on the Monday that's fine they're like yeah whatever it's only an extra day and I was fine at that stage and then I got, um, so day five was Tuesday then, no, yeah, um, so anyway, I, the closer we got, the more anxious I was getting, so I phoned them and said, I know I said Monday, but if I go on the Sunday like was originally agreed, is that still okay, will I still get a phone call on the Sunday, because I don't want... I don't want Nick, I, I was getting him to phone him and then he was going to be sitting with that all day because I didn't want to know without him there. And he, um, they were like, yeah, fine. So Nick drove me through the checkpoints because we live in Pocono, which I think is on the border of Auckland and Waikato, on the Waikato side. So we drove through the checkpoint told them where we were going for fertility test and it's the only place that does it and I queued outside the lab test in Mount Wellington because it had moved during lockdown and I queued and I it was almost a riot because somebody went in first and oh gosh it was crazy um lockdown mentality people go crazy so yeah, they did that, and I tried to keep myself busy by um, organising the bookshelf. And then I got a phone call at 12 o'clock on the dot, and I leapt up. Nick was in the bedroom in here, and I leapt up, and I was like, Nick, on the phone. Put them on speakerphone, and it was, I'm so sorry, today. it's not good news today. And I crumbled. I crumbled, I was a wreck. And it was basically, I just handed the phone to Nick, I couldn't say anything. And so like, I'm so sorry, do you want us to book an appointment? So I can't, and yeah, so that was, that was that. And luckily, so that was, as I said, on mon Sunday, I was grieving. I took Monday off to grieve and was kind of like, now what? I can't afford private. What, what is it? How, how, I've got to, how have I got to figure out how to move on and be a person, a childless person? Which there's nothing against being a childless person. 
if that's what you want, but when you don't want it, and it's thrust upon you, it takes, <laughs> it takes a bit of getting used to. And I've made peace with it once, I'd make peace with it again if it happens. Um, so, yeah, luckily though, I said earlier that I, um, I thought that was it, that was our only chance. And, sorry, fly. Turns out it's not our only chance. On the Tuesday, I got an email saying, congratulations, you qualify for round two of publicly funded IVF. And I phoned Nick and he was thrilled and I was relieved, but in shock. And everybody I told was thrilled as well because I didn't know, I, I just didn't know. And I told some other people and they were like, yeah, of course. But, oh, okay. So I did feel a bit stupid, so. Yeah, if your IVF fails the first time, you do get a second round. There you go, now you know. So I, um, that was that. So it was kind of like, okay, that's fine. We get another chance, cool. And I kind of drew a line over the top of the last failed cycle, which now I'm dealing with again, talking about it now. And we went for our appointment, our debrief and next steps appointment. So our, our next cycle starts November and our appointment, our next steps appointment was on the Thursday, just gone today, Saturday. So it was two days ago. And I'll finish off with what she said and then I'll do a, a, a second episode telling you about everything and what I've got to do leading up to that. So, yes, so it turns out, yeah, my AMH levels are low and the AMH stands for anti-malarian hormone or something like that. And what that is, that's the hormone that um, I think the eggs produce. If it's high, it means you've got a lot of eggs if it's low it means you've got not many eggs and i'm teetering on the low side and i have a feeling that could be because i had endometriomas removed from both ovaries and i asked because when they have when they did the ultrasounds they found another cyst on one of my ovaries on my left one and i asked her if it was worth whipping it out and turns out that when you have an endometrioma removed from your ovary they have to cut into the ovary and they're taking out the layer where the eggs live so i probably had a good two cysts removed already along with a bunch of eggs and i was uh, 21 at the time so that's that's a while ago and the others the other bunch of apples have been kind of sitting there rotting away or you being used but yeah so i didn't i lost some of the chances there which was a bit poos so yeah they're not removing any more um so and the eggs that they had so as i said about them not working they have recommended a time-lapse imagery, which turns out, I misunderstood a lot the first time around, is 900 and something dollars total. So it doesn't matter how many eggs you get, they'll put them all in an incubator. And the idea is that they'll be there with a camera that takes a photo every 10 minutes and it can track how they divide and how well they divide over that time and they can check for any abnormalities and the AI that's related, the artificial intelligence, puts that against their data and it can pick the best one. And because they're not taking them out of the incubator to check and putting them back, they're not um, disturbed as often. So they're more likely to carry on doing what they're doing and grow better 
so it's yeah the environment was good my environment was good it's just the eggs um so what they've told me to do is lower my toxin level um and take some supplements that was it so i will draw a line over it there it's been half an hour and i know the brain fades after a bit so i'll leave it there so thank you for listening to me that is my um recap of my first lot of ivf um well, my journey to now my first ivf round and i will give you more information about round two and what i have been told to do to help with egg production in the next episode so until then this will go this is live now the next one i'll put out next week so you don't have to wait a full two weeks i'll put it out next week so thank you for listening to me if you want to comment below i would love to hear your your story and what you've learned in your experience and if you'd like to share your experience then please do please get in touch and i will interview you and ask you how your experience was because as i said at the start the more like it, you're not alone there's thousands of us going through this millions of us probably so yeah let's normalize the shit things and the rubbish parts of life because good things come out of it at the end fingers crossed hope your journey goes well and i'll see you in the next podcast bye thank you for listening to the women's wellness podcast for links and show notes please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast i would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.